vegetable growers who have beautiful trees, all these leaves, as well as the constant background. And if you remember us talking about gluing our pieces of broken slate to a board, uh, each support can do more to uh, builders, I guess. <laughs> and we built a big cross out of our broken pieces of slate. And I thought that was incredible. Like, this cross was huge. And it was full of our brokenness and, and our need for God. And it was, it was just incredible. And it united everyone. So on the Thursday night, uh, we took communion as an entire conference. So having 600 people take communion is, it's an experience. But it was really great to see everybody coming together in, with, at Christ's table. And I had the honor of being able to serve the union um, that, on that Thursday. So that's myself sitting, serving communion with uh, one of my new friends from Nova Scotia as well as we're serving it to the uh, conference coordinator, Ruben Semmel. This is Janice, taking tea. So everyone, they held um, a bowl of bread, and then you just take it, and then you dip it in the wine, and you eat it right away, and then you go sit down. So it was all taken at different times, which was different, which was a change for us, but I really liked it. You actually got a big chunk of bread, not like a little cube. <laughs> and yeah, it was it was a good experience. And just having that many people together and having youth serving youth, I thought was uh, really great. We had a whole lot of international guests. Yeah, it was a Canada Youth Conference, and it's for people from all across Canada. But we had visitors from Hungary, Cuba. Uh, India and Thailand all come down, and this is a group from India teaching us one of their um, sort of cultural dances. Yeah. So that was also a really neat experience being able to connect with Christians from not only across Canada but from across the world. So these are just some pictures of, the new, of old friends and new friends that sort of reconnected at <laughs> CY. It was a really great week. Um, I encourage everybody who has youth in the church to go to it because you really grow a lot and make a whole lot of connections. And even if um, one person that I met, they're the only youth at their church. And they're in Toronto, so they have a lot of people in their church, but they're the only youth. But this event sort of made it seem as if they weren't an island anymore. They were still connected to people in the church, even though they might not be there. It was actually so incredible to see so many Presbyterians, like not even Christians, like Christian Presbyterians all together worshiping, and it was just incredible like, how many people there were. It was so much fun, and it was definitely an incredible experience. So I'd just like to thank on behalf of everyone who went to uh, the church for helping us and giving us the opportunity. I'd like to thank Michael and Christine for their words. There's not really a lot that I'm going to add, but there are just a couple of things. Maybe, Murray, if you could just kind of flip through the pictures. And that's a picture of worship. That's one of our, that's Alex, uh, who was with us. And that, of course, is the praise band. And Glenn Soderholm, who uh, is a singer-songwriter, as well as a Presbyterian, ordained Presbyterian minister, actually led the band. And then, of course, we had Michelle in the band. We were very proud of that, of Michelle for being there. Uh, the drama we had was excellent. We had this little group of uh, three teens who formed our drama group, and they did a great job. Every night they'd come out, and they'd, they'd do a pre drama presentation that was related to what we were talking about that evening. And we also had a uh, liturgical dance, which was exciting, as well as amazing graphics. And uh, our two leaders, uh, 
Sarah and Derek were excellent. They did a tremendous job of, of preaching and leading worship. And this is the beginning, of course, uh, the very beginning, Michael mentioned, we started out in Genesis. Basically, we worked our way from Genesis to Revelation. Genesis was the creation, and with the mantra, God saw that it was good that we saw in the first, that we have in the first creation story, we recognized that God created a beautiful world full of love, full of uh, beauty. And the next night, we were uprooted. And that is the night that through the crucifixion, through the cross of Christ, we recognized our own brokenness and our separateness from God, our Creator. And that was symbolized by the dead tree. But on the Wednesday night, we became rebooted as we looked at the story of the resurrection. And we focused on Mary, Peter, and John and their experience of the empty tomb. And then Mary's experience of seeing the risen Christ and Jesus calling her by name. And we recognize that we, we come to meet the risen Lord when Christ calls us by name as well. And by Thursday night, the tree had been planted and was beginning to blossom, was beginning to bear fruit. And you can see the huge cross in the brown ground. And the next one, honey. And that is the night, as Michael mentioned, that we, we all had communion by a tincture, which was really quite a process, very well organized uh, for 600 people to have communion together. Next picture, where's Sarah Travis? And the next picture. And the final night, we had a full tree, a live tree, up on stage. And the next picture shows on Friday night, we thanked our foreign guests that were with us. We had a young lady from Hungary, we had a group from Jobat, India, and we had people from Taiwan. And they were a great pleasure to have with us all week. The next picture. And we also had Pauline Brown and Wilma Welsh as our special guest that night. And here's a picture of Pauline, you can just see uh, Connor in the background there. And on the very last night, we had a cross put on our foreheads. We read the, the part of Revelation that mentions that all of Christ's followers will have a mark on their forehead. So we were marked and we were given a leaf uh, to keep as a keepsake. Thank you. Next one. And here is that amazing tree of life. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to invite Christine. We have one song, and it's based on the prayer of St. Patrick that is uh, called the, uh, I'll have to read it, the Lorca. And the Lorca is the Trinity Prayer, and we sang this every night. And we're asking, we've asked Christine to come up and sing it now for us. So I was in the worship band at Sioux Online, and it was probably the most experienced the most amazing experience, rather, that I've ever had. Um, I wasn't in the conference track, I was in the leadership, and so basically, uh, we didn't really have a lot to do during the day, so I would kind of join different groups, like I sometimes hung out with leadership track, sometimes with conference track, and we would practice a lot, um, and every night we would sing, you know, six or seven songs, and people would worship, and it was amazing, it was amazing leading people to God through music. Um, this song was adapted from St. Patrick's Breastplate, and I think that um, after this song, you guys will be doing that. Um, so yeah, I I didn't play guitar there, I just sung, so bear with me, because I just learned this yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 